So I'm gonna show you guys how I rooftop the Old Town Autopilot 120. Um, when it's just a day trip and stuff, I'll keep my the rods I'm taking in the paddle right here. And I use this little night eyes to tie it to my roof rack. And then I throw the motor and the battery either in the uh, back seat or just in the back of the bed like that. And most of the time I do keep my rods in here, but like I said, when it's just a day trip and I know I'm coming right back, um, I leave them on the back of the bed just for easy access. And I'll show you what I'm talking about when I said in one of my videos about it rocking when you're when you're rooftopping it like this. Hopefully I'm working on a fix for that, but if not, then it's something you should definitely be aware of uh, what I'm talking about. If you don't already know if you don't have one or if you're planning on rooftopping it and you haven't got to it yet. Yeah, my wife's forerunner made it a little bit harder to do that because I couldn't quite pull it as far forward as I wanted to. But the nice thing is if you don't have the motor in, it's a little bit lighter. Plus it gives you that hole that you can kind of sit under it. And once you have it up like this and grab it and push it forward. And it does slide pretty easy on this right here. This is also why it rocks and you saw it when I pick the nose up, it's either going to lean one way or the other. So if you're going to do that, you're going to want to make it go one way or the other because if you just try to pull it straight up, it's not going to work. So now all I would do is throw my straps from here to here on both racks and tighten her down. But it, see, it's not impossible to rooftop this thing. And it's really not that hard. It takes a little bit of effort. All right, now I'm going to show you guys how I strap it down you know, by myself with the kayak carrier on one side and this rod rack here, where's that, right there on this side. Cause it does get in the way. You can't really use these tie down points right here with this in the way. So I've got it looped around right here, just like this. And then I feed it through like you normally would. And then you just give it a nice toss. How I got it tied down on the other side. So as you can see it comes in right in front of the boom box uh, bar. You go down, you loop it underneath. This side's your short side. So this is tag end, you want to loop. And then you just pull like that and now the back's locked in and we just got to do the front right here this is gonna work the same way as well just I gotta untangle that a little bit so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna feed it and I'm gonna bring it over here and then again feed it through like this I'm gonna pull it tight Make sure you get over the rod box, so now I'm over it. And then you just toss it over. So here you go. Again, you just flip it around, feed it through, pull it tight. Shaking it, it's not going anywhere. Uh, one little pro tip, I do leave the fish finder. I don't, longer trips, I'll fold it. I'll flip it and fold it in. On shorter stuff, I don't, I don't think it, I don't really go that fast. You know, speed limits are usually like 45, 55 at most. Um, longer trips, like I said, I'll fold it in. On this, the seat, how I leave it, I almost forgot, is I definitely secure the back like you would on the water. And then I have this bungee that I, 
I cut down and I actually had the orange that matched the kayak, so that was good. But this keeps the seat from flying up. Because it's not gonna go anywhere like that. So if you're running tight on room and you don't wanna throw your seat off below or whatever, you can leave it up here. And I just cut this bungee so it'd be tight on that, but also when you're on the water, you can stow it away as it clips right in there on both sides and right in here. So it's the right distance to clip right up underneath this bar in that fabric on your seat. So you can store it right there and it's good and out of the way. You're not gonna lose it. And then when you get off the water and then transport, you just pull it out and do that there. I kind of did the same thing with this. And that allows me to strap this Hobie bag, which normally have a frame to here, but it's an old town. So I use a bar up there and then a bungee down there. And it's again, not going anywhere. But anyways, that is how you, or that's at least how I, load up my autopilot 120 on a roof rack hopefully this video was helpful and it showed you that you can load this heavy kayak up on a roof rack and this is by no means a short vehicle this is a to uh, toyota tundra with a yakima um forget the actual name but it's, a, it's just a roof rack it's a heavy duty one 78 inches wide it's pretty tall pretty hard to get up there the 106 is not long enough to easily load up on this rack. I did do it, but it's it's very hard to do. Uh, the 120 is actually easier, it is heavier, but that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.